The biggest goal I have for this channel is to get people to start fasting, and I will explain how to get started in this video. Another big goal for the channel is to dispel all the incorrect things people say about fasting. There's lots of nonsense ideas out there to scare people away, like cortisol during a fast being bad. In reality, cortisol during a fast is vital and the only time it causes harm is when it's elevated constantly while insulin is high because this leads to a loss of lean tissue. Ironically, this is something fasting can put an end to. People also talk about being fat adapted a lot, but no one seems to have much idea what this actually entails, and most of the explanations I hear fall into the realm of crazy talk. We're flying to the moon in a rocket built for Crazy talk, crazy talk, change the subject! The first thing to keep in mind is that you won't lose muscle during 36 to 96 hour fasts. For most people you will gain lean tissue from fasting due to growth hormone release. But if you are obese, you get less growth hormone and this allows your stomach to shrink and your skin to shrink but it won't cause muscle loss. In short, your body always does the correct thing for the current situation and only very long fasts will cause muscle loss. You also won't get lower testosterone. In fact, it usually goes up for men after the fast because your luteinizing hormone is released during the fast and this is what causes your testes to produce testosterone. Aside from injury and tumors, it's really obesity and poor metabolic health in men that leads to low testosterone. This leads to elevated SHBG and decreased luteinizing hormone activity. And this ultimately means that you're going to have low testosterone. I have videos talking about these issues in more depth, but it comes up literally every day and puts many people off, so it bears some repeating. To understand why fasting can have almost miraculous benefits, you have to understand the human immune system is for more than just fighting infections. It's also used to repair the damage of aging, for repairing muscle after exercise, and even for clearing out plaque and glycated tissues through phagocytosis. This process is also the method the body uses to clear out all foreign material and blood clots, whether natural or artificial in nature. When you fast, not only are all these processes accelerated, but your immune system itself is repaired. During the fast, you lose immune bodies like white blood cells, and once the fast is over, you create brand new, healthy ones. Just one 72-hour fast is enough to replace up to one-third of your immune bodies. This is important for many reasons, such as autoimmune conditions, and also because many medications such as chemotherapy and certain other controversial treatments can actually damage the immune system. This leaves you wide open to cancer, allergies, autoimmune issues, and other problems down the road. Fasting also reduces inflammation by lowering insulin, which is important if you want your immune cells to be able to reach the things which need to be repaired. Most people today are in poor metabolic health, even if they're skinny, and this is often a big problem for them. And as you may have guessed from what I said earlier, fasting can help a great deal with cancer prevention, autoimmune diseases, and even allergies. Under medical supervision, People with lethal peanut allergies have been able to overcome them through a combination of fasting and probiotics. Fasting is also very helpful for the gut, which in turn is heavily involved in autoimmune conditions, allergies, and even aging itself. It also normalizes both male and female hormones and will help menopausal women with hot flashes by removing damaged forms of estrogen from the body. These are very damaging to the liver, so this is also helpful for men. If that doesn't convince you it's worth a try, then I'm not sure what would. Would you like a schmuck and a pancake? A what? Sugar and a waffle? No. Pipe and a crepe? No. Bong and a blintz? No. no. Oh well, then there is no pleasing you. Unless, of course, vastly improved dental health might sway you. Yeah, baby. While fasting is not exactly easy, 
especially when you start off, it does become easier as you become fat adapted. In reality, this is mainly just your insulin level. When insulin is high, you simply cannot access fat from inside the fat cells, and this causes an energy deficit during fasting that can be hard to endure. People believe they are burning mostly glucose when eating a high carb diet, but in reality they are burning mostly palmitic acid, which is produced by the liver when excessive carbs are consumed. I've already talked a bit about why stearic acid from beef is so amazingly healthy, but palmitic acid from sugar and starch is essentially its evil twin that causes many problems and I'm sure I'll be talking about that more in the future. As you fast, insulin drops quickly and in about 24 hours you will be at 40% of the levels you started with. This increases again when you eat, but excessive insulin creeps up over the years and each time you fast it goes back to a somewhat lower level, especially if you're eating a healthy lower carb diet when you break the fast. This is where the side effects of fasting mainly come from. As your insulin plummets you also lose electrolytes and you can get keto flu or feel weak. You also may feel like you have the symptoms of hypoglycemia, but many times this is not true. Your cells are simply resistant to insulin at the cellular level and they have to take some time to either repair themselves or simply be recycled by the immune system. And it can be psychological as well. So do take your blood sugar if you suspect this and you may find that you don't have hypoglycemia at all. In fact, that's going to be the case almost all of the time. At the same time though, don't force yourself to power through a fast. My first 48 hour fast was just awful and if you get dizziness, shaking hands, extreme lethargy, or irrational thoughts, or palpitations, or anything else that's serious, just stop the fast. It will definitely be easier the next time, I promise. Since your insulin is low from fasting, if you eat a meal, you can often dive right back into the fast and this will be easier this time around because your insulin will be low and this is not what most people would expect but this is a good way to keep things moving. When you fast, always eat a very low carb meal before you start the fast and when you break the fast, make sure that meal is also very low carb. If you have trouble sleeping during the fast, try some butter or cream right before bed. If that doesn't work, a small amount of berries can help you sleep. It does have some carbs so it's not ideal, but it's better than just breaking the fast or losing too much sleep. Red light therapy also helps a lot with sleep, but keep in mind you don't need as much sleep while fasting. So don't despair if you don't get a full 8 hours in. Sleep is really there for the sake of autophagy, and when you're fasting this is already being triggered in an accelerated fashion. In general, don't expect everything to be perfect on a fast. Fasting stresses the body, but that's why it has good effects, so you're just going to have to deal with a little bit of discomfort sometimes. It's perfectly normal. Exercise also stresses the body, but afterwards you become stronger and healthier than ever. It's the same thing here, but keep in mind you get many of the same benefits from a fasting mimicking diet, such as low calorie broth only diets. Typically there is less than 18 grams of protein and close to zero net carbs in these diets. This may not have as much of an effect as a full fast, but it also reduces insulin, so you can use this as a first step into fat adaptation. Or you could just go completely keto first, which would also help a lot. While people often take ketone readings during a fast and become worried if blood sugar stays high or if it even goes up, this is really irrelevant to the process of fat adaptation. Your body knows what it's doing, and if your blood sugar is going up, then your body is just getting rid of fat from the liver, and that's a very good thing. This often happens in the morning due to the dawn effect, but if you have a really fatty liver, this could happen throughout the entire fast. When you fast a lot, or if you eat a very low carb diet, your cells become accustomed over time to burning more fat than many people today do, and this happens at the cellular level. This is often misrepresented as insulin resistance, but in reality, glucose is designed to be used as a fuel for the brain only when ketones are not available, and it's not really meant for the rest of the body. And when you're healthy, your body preserves it for this purpose, 
When you're unhealthy, your other cells do burn glucose, but only because they're attempting to get rid of the excessive amount and because of all the mitochondria damage that's caused by using this as a fuel in the first place. This is especially damaging in hypoxic conditions caused by inflammation from a high carb diet. This is also why in fat adapted people your blood glucose can go up while exercising. This is actually a good thing and it proves that you're healthy. This means for a long distance run like a marathon, you will never have to stop for food or drink or one of those ridiculous sugary drinks every 20 minutes that people take. While your ability to control glucose does matter, that is dictated ultimately by how healthy your liver is, and it will be in top shape if you're doing regular fasting. Your moment to moment glucose readings really don't matter much, which is why you don't need to bother with a continuous glucose monitor. If you're fasting regularly and you don't have type 2 diabetes, you just don't have to worry. Some people will try to panic you into thinking every time your blood sugar goes above 140, you cause permanent harm, but this is just misunderstanding and fear-mongering. In fact, the blood levels your doctors go by are largely nonsensical, like LDL and ApoB, and when they are not nonsensical, they are actually still based on unhealthy populations, and they're just averages. Do you really want to compare yourself to the average person in an unhealthy society? All that tells you is that you're right on schedule for an early grave dug by Big Pharma and Big Food working hand in hand. Ooh. To human misery! <laughs> in reality, blood markers are highly context sensitive, and when you have low insulin and low insulin resistance, they will no longer conform to the values your doctor expects. That's because your body is actually working properly, unlike 90% of the people today. And that is all fat adaptation is. Your insulin level and insulin resistance at the cellular level, which is actual damage to the cell which keeps it from working properly, are lowered and you don't have as many problems anymore. The more you fast, the more of both of these go down and the fewer side effects you get from fasting. I don't even think of food on the first day of a fast anymore, no hunger at all until the second day. I used to be ravenous after a few hours without food. And if I do go a long time without fasting for some reason, then I find it's much harder to get back into it. So keep this in mind as you go. Just chip away at that insulin every time you fast and try to have a better diet when you do eat. Not only in reducing your carb intake, but having less junk food, which includes sugar, bread, cereal, and anything else made with veg oil, wheat, or sugar. It may seem impossible at first, but if you keep working at it from both sides, eventually you'll make it through. I already lost 10 pounds. In, in one day. No offense, Sheriff, because you look great. Um, but aren't you the least bit curious as to how you dropped 10 in a day? Well, to tell you the truth, Agent, I don't give a flying fudge. <laughs>